Aloha, everyone. I am Coach Jay with Academic Coaching for World Changers under the direction of Dr. Pam. And today's video is designed to be a short. I'm hoping to keep my word on that. However, I want to give you as much information as I can. I pulled two career theories that I thought would pair well together for a video because a lot of the vocabulary you'll see on the NCE will pertain to both of these career theories. And the career theorists that I am referring to are Ginsburg, Ginsburg, Axelrod, and Herma. For the NCE, as well as some of the, the literature you read about this theorist, they are going to be referred to as Ginsburg et al. And that just means Ginsburg and his people, as well as Donald Super. And again, a lot of the vocabulary you'll see on the NCE for both of them will be the same because Super borrowed a lot of his theory from them. And that's why they're going to be paired together today. Both Ginsburg and his crew, as well as Donald Super, were considered developmentalists. So we're going to talk a little bit about these two developmentalists. Today's quote, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. Hopefully that's the case for you all that are pursuing the field of LPC, mental health, etc. So let's get started on our people today. So we'll start with Ginsburg and his crew, and it's Ginsburg, Ginsburg, Axelrod, and Herma. You'll likely, again, see them referred to as Ginsburg et al. on the NCE. They were developmentalists, like Super, and they presented their theory in 1951. So when you think about developmentalists, and that's in whether you see them on the NCE and um, careers or in health and relationships, you have to know their ages and their stages for developmentalists. That's key for the NCE. Um, and again, the theory for Ginsburg and his crew was created in 1951. So if you think back to the 1950s, women were homemakers for the most part, and men were in the workforce. So a lot of these theories pertain specifically to men, white men, middle-class white men that were college educated. Hence them not being um, widely used anymore. The only theory that is still used, um, that is still prominent within the career section is um, John Holland's Reasec. So Ginsburg, again, developmentalists presented their theory in the 1950s. They were based heavily on middle-class white males who had the freedom to choose their occupation. So the belief was um, vocational choices influenced by four factors, the reality factor, the influence of educational process, the emotional factor, and individual values. Ginsburg and his team also believed that decision-making was important and was influenced by adolescent adjustment patterns. And they agreed the occupational decision, that occupational decision-making was a lifelong process. And again, we'll talk about super later, but did super did expound upon their research. So let's get a little more in depth with Ginsburg and his crew. So Ginsburg, the good thing about Ginsburg et al is that they only have these three stages where Super has a bunch of different things that we're gonna go over in a few. But they only have these three stages, the fantasy stage, and that should say B up to 11 or birth up to 11, tentative stage from 11 to 17, and the realistic stage from 17 onward. And again, some of the vocabulary you see here, you'll see with super. So keep that in mind. So let's go over each of these stages in somewhat some depth. So with the fantasy stage, if you think about how little children learn about careers, I know when I was teaching, we had um, play, th play centers. So we had dramatic play, we had blocks, and a lot of what they knew or learned about careers started in that stage. They were introduced to the pet shop or the doctor's office through through fantasy play. So that's pretty much how the younger um, children around probably four to five learned about play and you'll or learned about careers. And you'll often see them when they are playing outside or at home. They're often playing in these roles. They're playing mommies or daddies or cops or um grocery store workers, et cetera. So fantasy play is exactly the way it sounds or fantasy um, introduce, introduction to careers is exactly how it sounds. Um, as they get a little older, I would say about like maybe middle school, um, middle before middle school, actually like fifth grade, they're not necessarily just looking at um, 
playing in these play centers or taking on these roles in, in different community helper roles. They're also being exposed to careers in different ways through their, their teaching, their teachers, their books. Um, I used to take my students on virtual field trips where they would be able to look at these different positions. So that's somewhat fantasy um, learning as well for careers. And that stops about age 11. So they move into the next stage, which would be that tentative stage from 11 to 17. And during this stage, a couple things happen. They develop interests in what it is they want to do. So again, they were just playing, um, fantasizing and looking at these different roles, but interest wasn't necessarily being developed at that point, according to Ginsburg. So at 11 to seven or 11, 12, 13, they're looking at interest. Is this something I want to do when I grow up? Is this something that could bring me uh, money? So we'll look at that value piece of it as well. Is this something that society will look at as a good job? That's value as well. Another thing that happens with between interest and value is capacity. So kids are also looking at, would I be good at this? If I'm not a student who is um, good in school, I probably wouldn't want to go to college to be a teacher. So they're looking at their capacity. Another example of that is the kid who's really, really great at ba a basketball at 15 or 16, really good at basketball, loves the, the NBA, but he's only 5'6 or 5'1", he likely is going to feel like he doesn't have the capacity. And that's just a rough example. But that's what capacity is. They're looking to see if it's something they are capable of doing or carrying out. And then this last stage, realistic, 17 and onward, they go through an exploration process. So they are graduating high school, likely, or while they were in high school, they could have been doing um, internships where they're learning about nursing or, or hairstylist or something along those lines. Um, they're crystallizing. Crystallizing in any sense of the word, when you see it on the NCE, just means it's hardening. Um, whatever their choice is, is starting to harden. And the specification, they're in that career and they're doing the work. Um, and that essentially is Ginsburg. Now, some of these vocabulary words, as I mentioned, exploration, crystallization, specification, capacity, interest, and value, we're going to see with super. So let's head on over there now. So Ginsburg and his crew only had those three stages. Super, however, had a bunch of stages and a few other theories. But today, we're only going to focus on uh, his theory of developmental tasks and um, the task and vocational aspect of it. So Donald Super, he was again based on Ginsburg et al. He believed the idea of five predictable stages of vocational development that occur as part of the continuous process throughout the lifespan. Um, the theory was based on the results from the career pattern study, which we'll take a look at. Um, and this large scale of longitudinal study followed the career development of a large group of boys from Middletown, New York, who were in the eighth grade and ninth grade in 1951. The study caused concern due to being homogeneous in nature and questioned its validity. Because the study only focused on a specific group of individuals that all were within the same demographic, so to speak, the validity was questioned because so many other people were left out of it. So we'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide, I believe. And Super expounded upon um, expanded and created the archway of determinants in the life rainbow um, career theory. So today we won't go over the archway of determinants in the life rainbow career theory. Those are two other theories that deserve their own video. Um, but this theory today, we're just going to talk about the developmental task and the vocational task that align with Ginsburg. So Super's developmental task, it's the um, tasks that people go through that are similar in nature to Ginsburg. So we'll go, we're going to go over them in depth. So the first one is growth. The next is exploratory. The one to follow that would be establishment, then maintenance, and then decline. Dr. Pam, if you watch her videos, which most of them are awesome, um, she uses the mnemonic device of JM to keep it in your head. I don't have a cool mnemonic device for this one, 
Um, it's just something you have to, to learn and, and know for the NCE because Donald Super is pretty important. So with growth, growth from birth to 14 to 15 years old, um, the development of capacity, interest, and self-concept. And I'll come back to self-concept. But as I mentioned, capacity and interest are some of the same vocabulary words you'll see on with Ginsburg and his crew. Super, um, his, his capacity and interest are the same in nature to Ginsburg. So all that means is they are figuring out if it's something they are good at and if it's something they want to do. It's the same concept. And that's from birth to about 14 to 15. So that stage for super is just a little longer. The fantasy stage for super would be growth, but it just expands the, the age range. So it goes from birth to 14 years old. Self-concept, however, is new there. That's why it's highlighted and bolded and underlined. Self-concept aligns with Donald Super's archway of determinants. And again, that's coming in another video. Um, so we won't go over it in depth, but self-concept is supposed to be developed according to Super by the age of 15. And that's why it's within this stage. And we'll go over the archway of determinants um, in the next video. So exploratory is from 15 to 24, and tentative choices are made. So by 15, Donald Super says, um, you should have developed self-concept. And self-concept is, I know what it is I want to do. I know the career field I want to end up in. So at 15, during the exploratory phase, you should have a tentative choice, somewhat of a tentative choice made. Um, and within that, you should have started the process of obtaining that career. Because for super, by 25, you should be an establishment. And that means you should have your career, entry-level career, and you should be working that entry-level career. And if, remember, this theory was devel developed for middle-class white males. So from 25 to 44, you should have you should have your career and you should be working that career. You're either climbing the ladder or you're continuing um, the adjustment process, which would be that maintenance phase after 44. So maintenance would happen 45 to 64, and there's a continual adjustment process. Either you're climbing and climbing and climbing until you're like the CEO, or you're kind of just going to work and, and doing your job until it's time to decline, which would be that last stage, decline or retire or disengage. And decline would be 65 plus. Back in the 1950s, because again, this was based on the 1950s, people worked from the time they were 25 or men worked from the time they were 25 until the time they were si about 65, 66. And at that point, they just went home. They earned their gold watch. They went home and prepared to for the next phase of um, the life process. Um, so pre-retirement, work output issues and retirement. What Super did as time went on, he began to see that this career developmental task um, theory that he had did not pan out. It wasn't like accurate for everyone. So he later changed decline to disengagement because not everyone can retire at 65 and go home and prepare for the next phase of life. Some people have to take on encore careers. Some people have to raise their children. Um, some people have to do many other things. They don't have the luxury of just declining. So that changed later for Super. And those are his developmental tasks. That's just a piece of what we're getting ready to go into. Super had a lot of different theories. Um, but I do want to touch on before we go into the vocational task, um, Super's career pattern study. So super is responsible for that career pattern study I mentioned earlier. And the career pattern study examined the vocational behaviors of eighth and ninth graders all the way into their thirties. Those adolescents who were career mature and high achieving in high school tended to be more career mature and successful as young adults. So that's kind of where super's um, theories developed from. He based it on a very homogeneous group and didn't take into account that um, the way things work in their world and purview was not the way things work uh, in the larger scale, on the larger scale of things. So that's the super career pattern study. The next test, the next thing we're gonna go over are the vocational tasks. And the vocational task can be a little tricky to understand. So I will do my best to um, break it down. 
Um, but super identify these vocational tasks and these vocational tasks happen between the developmental tasks. So if you look at these stairs, there's growth, exploration, establishment, maintenance, and disengagement. Those are the tasks we just went over, those developmental tasks. But what Super said was in between these developmental tasks, these vocational tasks also took place. So if you think back to that slide that I just had up, the crystallization phase, that was mentioned in the growth phase because it happens during the growth phase. And again, crystallization just means so it hardens. They, they're hardening in their career choice. So what he says is crystallization should happen between 14 and 18. And they should have um, formulated a general vocational goal through awareness. So they've gone through interest. They've gone through capacity. They've gone through all those things. And now they should have crystallized or a hardened choice in what it is they want to do. So that should happen within that growth stage. Specification happens next, then that's 18 to 21. And again, if you remember that little um, area that we were talking about on the um, growth exploration um, stages, it happens in between there as well. So they're moving from a tentative to a specific career choice. So they have a, an idea. So think of it in terms of, I wanna be a scientist. That's crystallization. So I know the field that I want to be in, but I want to be a marine scientist. So I specify at that point when I say I want to be a scientist, then I want to be a marine scientist. So I'm specifying in that choice. So what happens after specification is implementation. So either I need to go to college, I need to go to trade school, I need to go to some through some type of formal educational process to prepare for entering employment. And again, by 24, um, by 24, we should have completed the training. So at 25, we will be stabilized. We will start that career. We are working stiffs at 25 during the 1950s. Um, so they're confirming a preferred choice by performing the job. And that goes from 24 to 35. And then consolidation happens at 35. And that is becoming established in career, advancing and achieving status. And that's doing all of those hard things at work. So you can climb the ladder, you can get that raise and become the CEO or the um, assistant CEO and earn that gold watch. So they're doing all of those things during the consolidation phase. And those are the vocational tasks. The important thing to remember for Super and Ginsburg is that they are developmentalists. So you have to know their ages and stages. With Super, it can get a little hairy because he has two sets of things that go on within his task. First one being the um, developmental task, and that's growth, exploration, establishment, maintenance, and disengagement. And then he has the vocational task, the crystallization, the specification, implementation, stabilization, and consolidation. You have to know those in order. Another mnemonic device is CSI. South Carolina, it didn't work for me, but it may work for you to help you remember it. But these are things you have to remember for super. Last part of super is super stages and tasks no longer apply because some have gaps in their employment or careers and recycle. This model was initially focused primarily on middle-class white males and super recognized that we can repeat or cycle through these developmental tasks. So. His science was flawed, in other words, because it wasn't science, um, but that is super. Super also has, again, the archway of determinants, which deserves its own video, as well as super's life career rainbow that also deserves its own video. This video was specifically for how super and Ginsburg link. So that brings me to the end. And here is my affirmation for the end of this video. And it is. I am not my career. My career is only something I do. So if you put this in terms of the NCE, the NCE, while it is one of the most difficult and challenging tests to take and to study for, the NCE does not make or break who you are as a therapist. Don't let it get the better of you. Take the time to study. Watch as many videos as you can. Rewatch the same videos. Repetition is key here. And um, pretty much happy studying. And I will see you on the next video. There's my information. 
as well as email website for other coaches, as well as some other things we have on the website and a coupon code for me, Coach Jennifer. So I will see you all next time. Happy studying and good luck.